Minor, I feel this so strong in the Holy Ghost this morning. I'm going to go to the Word of God in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Now, all things are of God. Aren't you glad today that you are a new creature? And if you are not new, if you have got to the back to the old, I'm here to tell you this morning, God wants to restore you he wants to renew you he didn't only redeem you but he wants to make you new again can we all lift our hands I don't know how you're going to worship or whatever you're going to do you can clap your hands you can shout with a voice of triumph but I want you to know that it belongs to him your worship this morning belongs to him God have your way in this service this morning hallelujah in the name of Jesus let us worship together Thank you, Jesus. Testimony of your goodness. In the safety of your presence. Tis so sweet. Tis so sweet. To only trust in Jesus. in the darkness your overwhelming kindness it follows me it follows me you're still in the fire just in case we feel alone
Our usher will get ready. Church this morning, I don't think a million reasons covers the reasons, the number of reasons I have to trust in Him. If you will, let's declare this together. I know we say it, I have to read it off the paper sometimes so I don't mess up, but you know, uh, we should know this by heart by now, so declare this with me. Upon the authority of your word, I have given, shall be given to me, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither. I bring my tithes today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received. My whole family saved in walking with God. Perfect health and abundance to walk in divine favor and blessings. I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed going out. And all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. Can wait for eternity. Join the saints that are already singing. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Just to bow down before your throne. See your face, I cry out, because you're holy, holy. Holy are you, Lord. Jesus, King of Kings. Jesus, Majesty. Jesus, Jesus. King of Kings. Song they're already 
singing holy, holy, holy are you Lord just to bow down before your throne see your face I'll cry out because you're holy holy, holy are you Lord Jesus song they're already singing holy 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 are you
before we started service and he said if you will sing unto me not unto them unto me I'm going to do a work today I will draw all men unto me he said if I would be lifted up I will draw them there is a need in this house There's a need that we may not can see on the outside, but there is a need in this house this morning. You've covered it. You think it's under control, but the Lord is saying, if you will sing unto me, I will give you rest for your weariness. I will give you healing for your brokenness, and I will give you strength for your weakness. I am your Lord. I am your God. Let me be. Worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb, for you are holy, holy are you Lord God Almighty, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb, for you are holy, holy, are you Lord God Almighty, worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb, you are holy. Worthy 
is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. You are holy. Give Him praise. Hallelujah. You're holy. You're worthy. Hallelujah. 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 We lift you up. We magnify. We You are worthy, Lord. You're worthy. Hallelujah. Can we just stay in this mode for just a minute? This is what the world is hungry for, young people. The longing and the hunger that is inside of them longs for the presence of God and they're told that that is not where it's at but I'm telling you the power that you seek for if you're going to be under an influence of something in this world I'm telling you you're going to say yes to some things and you're going to say no to things you cannot live in this world and not say yes to some things and no to some things. It's going to happen. And the things that you need to say yes to, the world says don't say yes to that. That's crazy. But the things that the world say yes to, it seems so crazy and upside down and twisted and sick and just so far from what is truth. But if we can say yes unto Him this morning... Lord, I don't have to go any, I don't have to stay with program. I don't have to continue just three song sermon and we're done. I want you. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. You are holy. Holy. Are you? worthy today I uh before church this morning I I texted a guy I work with and I said I'm gonna have my church pray for your dad today he was the one he's one of the guys that was injured in that PTI explosion accident that took place and they called yesterday while he was at work and they told him that his dad is possibly more than likely going to be a vegetable the rest of his life. And if you don't know what that means, he has no brain function. He's just living. He's not able to have any cognitive action in his mind. And I just texted him this morning. I said, man, I'm going to have my church pray for you and your dad. And he said, thank you so very much. Amen. Sister Will said it earlier, the church, the world needs more than just us. They need him. Amen. Uh, yeah, I, I, I love music and I love this place and this church, this, this fellowship that we have is great. Amen. But if we're not reaching the world, then what we're doing here is pointless. 
Yeah, I mean, because eventually we'll, we'll all grow old and we'll pass away. And if we don't reach, then the church will end, right? It's kind of how it works. It's, it's our job to reach. And no, this guy, he doesn't go to church. And I don't have much to offer. There's nothing I can do. But I look, uh, I can't go up there and say this is going to happen. I can't fix his dad. But I know the one who can. Amen. And, and what would happen? What would happen if God just miraculously healed him this morning? I mean, how many believe God can do it? I look at this, I look at this prayer list, and sometimes it, it gets to me because we read the same names over and over again. There are some new ones that are added to it here today, but it's always the same names. And I'm like, God, are you not God? You know, I mean, God, are you not who you say you are? The Bible says that we can try him and we can ask him. Like, God, God, are you not the God of healing? God, are you not the God of miracles? Are, are you not the God that split the Red Sea? Are, are you not the God that destroyed my enemies behind me? Are, are you not the God that provided? He is that God. Amen. So I'll, this morning when we pray, his name is Jason. I'm, I'm assuming Thomas, his, his son's name is Chandler Thomas. Jason Thomas. Let's pray that God will just touch his body this morning. Let there be healing. Not just for the man, but for the, for the person that, that could possibly be affected by this. And his family. Amen. And also Brother Lewis, Sister Willie. All these names, Eddie Fair, Kathy Fair, Josh Grotish, Teresa Kennedy, Marilyn Borden, and Gwen Mills, Marilyn Jansen, Catherine Hudson, Ukraine, our missionaries, our prodigals. Our, I mean, the list goes on and on. But is he not God? Yes. Amen. Why don't, you, why don't you just stretch forth your hands this morning? You got an un, unspoken request today. Why don't you let God know about it this morning? Why don't you tell him about your problems? Because he is the God that can heal. He is the God that can perform today. Lord, we love you. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. You are the God of Jacob. You are the God of Abraham. Lord, you are that God. Lord, you're the God that performs miracles. God, you've done it over and over and over again, God. You are the God that never fails today. And Lord, we ask, Lord, that you move upon every need, Jesus. Lord, we need miracles, signs, and wonders in these last days. God, we need to see your Spirit pour out upon your people in these last days. Lord, I pray for Jason today. Lord, that you reach down to that hospital bed. And Lord, that you touch him. Lord, you've done it in your word multiple time. God, you've healed so many, Lord. Lord, I know you're not done yet. Lord, move upon these knees today. Lord, we magnify you in this place. Lord, because you're mighty. Lord, you're a mighty God. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Let's magnify him. Let's magnify him for who he is. He is a healer. Come on, church, let's exalt his name. Hallelujah. I was lost. I was bound by a life of sin and shame. Until Jesus brought.
Margaret, she sent me a text message. And you know how you'll get a text message. It'll say, pray for someone. And I felt something special about that message. It said, pray for your Uncle Roland because God's doing something. I feel him moving, doing something. And I sent a message back and I said, in Jesus' name, believe in with you. Now, when we say we believe with someone, he says where two or three are gathered in my name, I'm going to do it, right? He's going to move. Well, as we were singing, you've already done enough. I was lost. I was bound. You've done enough for me. Enough for me to know that you are God. Enough for me to understand that you're always going to be faithful. Enough for me to never want to leave you. You've done enough for me to serve you and give you my life for the rest of my life. But I still want you to send out angels to my Uncle Roland this morning. I want you to send out angels to Kaylee this morning. God, I want you to send out angels to Adam this morning. I want you to send out angels to Natalie this morning. God, your angels are still going to do a work because you're God. And you're going to do great things. And as I begin to believe for the Holy Ghost to fall upon Roland Appleton this morning and know that the prayers that my grandmother prayed and the prayers that my mother prayed and the prayers that I have prayed God is going to fill him in the name of Jesus 
and I praise God for it and I declare it in the name of Jesus that he is filled from the hunger that's within him. So as I say that and I feel the power and my, my bones are shaking. I feel it in my bones this morning. I feel it in my blood. It's real. It's what they want. It's real and it's what they want. So if you've got a need and you don't need him to do anything else for you to prove that he's God, okay? If you, if you already know it, can you come on out and worship him for being God? and for coming into the world and coming into the shadows and bringing light into the dark places of the world because that's what he wants to do he wants to set us free so as we are running and we are worshiping with everything inside of us I want you to know that I declare as you jump and dance before the Lord today angels will run out of this place declaring victory over everything that you've asked God to do I believe it in Jesus name how many want to agree where the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom there is freedom for the captive the chains will fall and they shall be loose in Jesus name it's about it step out of the grave run into the wild and break into the wild do it with boldness and, and don't, don't be afraid, be afraid. run into wide open spaces grace is waiting for you dance like the weight has been lifted grace is to do a work so just lift up unto him 
He did it. Oh, yeah. He got it. name. The Lord wants to do a work. Hallelujah, Jesus. I hope it's okay, but I feel the presence of God. I want the young people, boys on this side, I want you facing that way. Boys on this side, face that way. Boys on this side, face that way. Every boy that wants to do it, Brother Jamie, I want you to be the first one. Sister Ginger, I want you to come down. Girls this way, facing this way. Sister Tanya will be first. Stand there by Sister Tanya. Tanya, come up a little bit. All the way down. Come on. Anybody else want to be a part of praying? Anybody that has a need, you're going to come to this old-fashioned prayer line, and you're going to meet Pastor at the end of it in the name of Jesus. And I believe that God, he said, if you'll tarry in my presence, if you won't get in a hurry, but you'll tarry, and you'll let me do something. i got great things for you this morning. So anybody that wants to come through this prayer line, I want you to be prepared. Sister Lisa, can you get on the piano for me? I want you to come on through the prayer line. Brother Wells, if you don't care to come over, Brother Tim, all the ministers, come over here. I want you to be at the end of the line. If you're coming through the prayer line, you're coming from this side, and you're going this way. We have to have order. Anybody who is needing prayer. And I want you to come believing in this Holy Ghost that God give you. I want you to come and believe in signs and wonders and miracles in the blood that was shed on Calvary for you and the stripes that he took for our healing. I want you to come believing that this service is different than any service you've been in. The Holy Ghost is in charge. Not Sister Wells, not the praise team, nobody else. This is the power of the Holy Ghost moving and working in the name of Jesus and I'm asking everybody that comes through I want you to say yes all the way through and when you come down to where these ministers are I want you to let them lay you don't lay your hands on them you just pray for them and you worship but as they come down and the ministers lay their hands that's, I'm following after Jesus you, you want to get upset it's okay I'm following what he's saying yes 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 receive yes 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 receive yes 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 receive yes 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 receive hallelujah you do not have to leave the Holy Ghost Pentecostal movement of God I'm not talking about Pentecost as a denomination I'm talking about the experience on the day of Pentecost what did he say they tarried 
they tarried until they were endued with power from on high power from on all high is here all you got to do is say yes come on sister tabitha you first whoever's first sister tanya you first i don't know where the prayer line starts let's go yes agree with her yes yes Jesus! Woo! Thank you, Jesus! Run into wide open spaces. Grace is waiting. Dance like the weight has been lifted. Grace is waiting. Where the Spirit of the Lord is there. That you are into the fullness of his love for the spirit is here let there be freedom let there be freedom Woo. bring all of your burdens bring all of your scars Woo. Come, come back to communion come back Run into wide open spaces. Grace is He's waiting. waiting for Woo. Dance, Dance like, like the weight has been lifted. Grace is waiting. When the Spirit of the Lord is there, is freedom. There is freedom. as you are into the fullness of his love for the spirit is here let there be freedom let there be freedom chains will fall prison shake at the sound of jesus name lies we hold Hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Chains will fall, prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives may hold, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Chains will fall, chains will fall, prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. as you are into the fullness of his love for the spirit is here let there be freedom let there be freedom where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom there is freedom where the spirit of the lord To the fullness of his love, where the spirit is here, let there be freedom, let there be freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Come out of the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of his love. For the Spirit is here, let there be freedom, let there be freedom. Dance like the weight, dance like the weight has
heart's been lifted Grace is waiting That it's like the weight has been lifted Grace is waiting As you are into the fullness of his love spirit is here let there be freedom let there be freedom where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom there is freedom yes and jesus where the said, spirit of the lord is freedom there is freedom come out of the dark just as you are into the fullness of his love spirit is here let there be freedom let there be freedom bring all of your burdens bring all of your spirit Spaces, grace is waiting for you. Dance like the weight has been lifted. Grace is waiting. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. I'm out of the dark, just as you are, into the full. fall, prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. God's made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Chains will fall, prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Life's made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. shake at the sound of Jesus name lives made whole hearts awake at the sound of Jesus name the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom there is freedom where the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom there is freedom come out of the joy just as you are into the fullness of his love for the spirit is here let there be freedom let there be freedom where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom there is freedom where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom there freedom out of the dark just as you are into the fullness of his love spirit is here let there be freedom let there be freedom Thank you, Jesus.
when I felt my Savior leading, I was drawn to what I could not understand. And for the cause of Christ, I have spent my days believing that what He'd help me be is who I am. As I've come to see the weaker side of me, I realize His grace is what I need. When sin demanded justice, said no I'm not gonna let you go I'm not gonna let you slip away you don't have to be afraid mercy said no sin will never take control life and death stood face to face darkness tried to steal Jesus, mercy said no. I was just a child when I felt my Savior leading. I was drawn to what I could not understand. For the cause of Christ, I have spent my days believing. What he'd have me be is who I am. As I've come to the weaker side of me, I realize his grace is all I need. When sin demanded justice for my soul, mercy said.
teach us how to live beyond ourselves. Let everything we say and do bring glory to your name and bless your heart. God, show us how to love like you. love I'm falling on my knees now I confess that you will always be
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Scripture tells us in Genesis chapter 3. <clears throat> so he drove out the man and placed a cherubim at the east of the Garden of Eden, a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. My message this morning was lost in paradise Eden was a garden planted by God for man originally to live to exist amen perfect harmony with his creator and it was a place of well as one word that it originates from means that it was a paradise 
It also could mean luxury, pleasures. Amen. It was a place that in whatever beauty you could imagine, uh, I'm sure it was. The Bible tells us that God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. Verse 28 says that God blessed them, and this is what he told his new creation, to be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish, the sea, birds of the air, every living thing that moves on the earth. God commanded them to multiply, but it but their first child was born after they were ran out of the garden. Now I'm I'm just summarizing here this morning, but could it be that Adam and Eve were so preoccupied in the environment of paradise? that they did not heed the command that God had given them to multiply. If Eve had children to care for, perhaps she would have never had the opportunity to have a conversation with the serpent. Regardless, she did have the conversation, and Adam ended up taking a bite of the fruit. And the Bible says they were both ran out of the garden. I think we all understand and we know that God has a plan for our lives. And that plan that He has, it is a perfect plan. Amen? Amen. But the Bible tells us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Each of us, in one way or another, we have laid in the hand, amen, of the potter in a very marred condition. The marring a result of sin, but yet he's instead of throwing the clay away, amen, he chooses to make it another vessel. When God drove man out of the garden, it was an act of mercy rather than an act of judgment. Why is that? Amen. Let me tell you this morning if man would have made his way after in the fallen condition he was, made his way to the tree of life, he would have never been able to get out of the garden. The reason man had to get out of the garden, amen, was there there was no altar in Eden. The only way that man can be reinstated in his proper placement with his creator is through an altar. And since there was no altar in the garden, it was absolutely imperative that man would not be eternally stuck in that place where there resides no altar. My question to you and I this morning is, what about us today? Is there an altar in your garden, in the place where you reside and dwell? Or are you so distracted by the things of this world in which you reside, amen, to be about the purpose for which you were called? I'm telling you, friend, Eden was paradise. Eden was luxury. Eden was a beautiful place. But I believe that God knows the ones he created, amen. And he he knew that the beauty of which their environment they resided in would keep them from ever being able to find an altar. And therefore, he drove them from the place of paradise so that they could be able to find an altar. By faith, the Bible says Moses, when he had come to years, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Think about it. Moses, he was there simply by God's providence, not coincidence, But when Moses' mother put him in that little ark in the river, 
Amen. God knew exactly who was fixing to come to that river for, for taking, a, taking a bath. Uh, amen. Pharaoh's daughter found him. He was living um, in the plush environment of the Egyptian palace. Uh, but Moses had a choice he had to make. Uh, he could have lived there and stayed there. He could have had anything he could have ever imagined. Uh, but he rather chose, uh, amen, uh, to not be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Uh, but he chose rather to suffer uh, affliction with the people of God. Uh, than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. It is very, very possible, and I'm sure guaranteed in all of our life, we're going to have to choose to leave the garden of pleasure so that we can get to an altar that's going to change our life for the purpose that God has called us to be. Hallelujah. When he refused to be called the son of, of Pharaoh's daughter, uh, amen, that's the same, the word refuse is the same word as deny that Peter used when he denied Jesus. I've got to be as adamant, uh, amen, uh, to serve God as I am in, in confirming or conforming uh, to anything of this world, uh, amen. Uh, the Bible tells us uh, that there was a young rich ruler. Uh, he came to Jesus and he said, what shall I do? It's a question. What shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? My question to all of us here today, do we really want what we're asking for? Do you really want eternal life? Do you really want what you're asking Jesus for? Because the thing that Jesus told him he had to do, the Bible tells us that he walked away sad at this word. He was sorrowful for he had great possessions. I'm telling you, friend, amen, you may question yourself and wonder, do I really want to do this? Can I remind us here today, there is nothing in this world that's worth losing your soul over and there's nothing in this world that's worth keeping me from a place called an altar it is at an altar where lives are, are changed no matter how out of line our lives can get never are we so far out of line that God is not able to reestablish our ways the Hebrew word for altar is used that's used most frequently in the Old Testament it is formed from the verb for the word slaughter and it means literally a slaughter place. See, the altar's not neat. It's not comfortable. It's not a pleasant place. But it is a place that this old flesh and this will of my flesh is not just hindered, but it's slaughtered. It's destroyed. It's demolished. I can't make it in a place of paradise, amen, without finding my way to an altar. Amen, an altar. Amen, it's distinct to a, from a temple, uh, whereas a temple implies a building or, or a roofed uh, structure. An altar implies an open structure. There's no confines uh, to an altar, right? Uh, amen, and an altar, when you lay yourself on an altar, uh, you don't get to determine the boundaries no longer. Uh, when you put yourself on an altar, uh, there is no off, off limits uh, to God. But when you present your body a living sacrifice, uh, you're saying, God, you demolish it, you slaughter it, you do whatever you've got to do because I don't want to get away from an altar because where there's no altar, amen, there's no way to change. Amen, hallelujah. God knew, amen, that man had to get out of paradise in order to get for them to get to an altar. God understands the allure of of pleasure and that of comfort in each of our lives. It was Job that said, I'll just die here in my nest. My nest is comfortable. Everything's in place. Everything's where it should be. But God come along and he began to tear apart that nest. One may say, God, why are you inflicting this kind of pain into my life? Amen. But from God's perspective, it's him getting you out of your comfort zone so that you can make way to an altar uh, that'll change your life uh, and allow you uh, to accomplish the purpose uh, that God has called you to accomplish. Amen. It was the prodigal who took his 
inheritance and the bible says not many days after uh, amen he gathered it all together he journeyed to a far country uh, and he wasted uh, his possessions uh, with prodigal living uh, but when he has spent all uh, there you go uh, amen it's pleasures uh, for a season uh, they do not last forever uh, they will come to an end uh, you will spend it all at some point uh, you will be left with nothing uh, at some point uh, and when he had spent everything he had there was a severe famine in the land and then he began to be in want can I tell you God knows when the famine's coming God knows what's ahead of you you're not, you're not safe when you're walking away from the father's house but even then when the prodigal was in a place that he never should have been amen when he come to himself he said I amen I'm going to go back to dad's house I I'm going to go back. And he was uh, welcomed to come back. Uh, amen. Uh, I'm thankful today again uh, that we serve a God who is able, uh, amen, to turn us around, uh, amen, and put us back on the right path. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I realize we live, in the, we live in the greatest nation in the world. We really are. We are blessed. If you would take whoever here this morning who has the lowest amount of possessions, you are still considered of one of the richest in our world today. We don't realize how good we really have it. I'm thankful for it. I'm thankful for the fact that we have the conveniences, we have vehicles, we have uh, decent roads. <laughs> Amen. We've got uh, air conditioning and all, all, all that's wonderful. But I'm telling you, friend, uh, I don't ever want to get so comfortable, not just in a place of a physical pleasure and comfort, uh, but a place where spiritually uh, I get so comfortable uh, that nothing is pushing me towards an altar. Uh, your comfort uh, will take you away from an altar. Uh, amen. Again, that's why uh, God had to get the man out of the garden uh, so that he would make his way to an altar. Uh, amen. But the reality is he understands the lure that the world has. And that's why we mentioned this morning, we don't need to love this world nor anything that's in the world because there's nothing in the world worth losing my soul over. For what profit, Jesus said, is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for? for his soul. Amen. Paradise, comfort, pleasure, money, convenience, the list goes on and on. None of that is worth losing, take, receiving that, but losing my walk with God, my relationship with God. Amen. My communication with God. Amen. My covering with God. All of that, amen. You can't even put a price tag on it. It's a value beyond anything this world can produce. I promise you, amen. Do not let, amen, that which is in you, amen, keep you, amen, or, or, or seducing you into the things of this world. The Bible says, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away of his own desires and enticed. And then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin and sin when it is full grown it brings forth death amen that's why it's called the mercy of God why are you pushing me out of this garden God why are you driving me out of this garden it's for your it's because it's mercy I'm getting I'm leading you to a place that's going to bring you to an altar that's going to change your life how many here are thankful for an altar in your life well, come on, let's stand one more time here this morning. Hallelujah, the Lord has already moved. He has demonstrated His power. But I promise you, I thank, I thank God for prayer lines. I thank God anytime His Spirit moves. That is, I'm, I'm so grateful. But let me tell you, friend, you don't you dare rely on a prayer line, amen, and forsake an altar. Don't, don't rely on a, boy, I hope we, need a, hope we get a good service this Sunday because I need to get my fix. You better get your fix every day of the week at an altar. You better find, you need to get familiar with an altar. If you don't have an altar in your life, don't think that God's going to let you stay in a garden 
Amen. He'll stir things. He'll, he'll disrupt things. He'll shake things. He'll do whatever's got to be done. Why? Because he knows the only way back to him. You can't go there bypassing an altar. You've got to have an altar in your life. And he'll make sure, amen, that you've got the opportunity to get to one. God, help us today. I don't want to look. I, I realize, again, an altar is messy. It's bloody. Amen. It's, it, it, it's no holds barred. And, 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 that, and that is true. But I want to view an altar more, not, not from the destructive side, but to the fact that it's actually, it's, a, it's, it's where wholeness actually is brought together. <laughs> and you say, why? That don't, that don't make sense. Well, amen. This living sacrifice that I present my body on as a sacrifice to this altar, yeah, it destroys that flesh. But what it does in destruction of that flesh is it brings wholeness to the person that I really am. You can't be who you really are out there. Prodigal? Amen. You're not, that's not where, he found himself in a pig's pen. That's not where he belonged. It went against everything that he had been designed to be. That's what the roads out there will lead you to places you don't, you were not designed to exist in. Amen. But is that an altar? Amen, where wholeness becomes. When actually what you've been created for the purpose that you've been created, amen, for, that's where it's established. I want to, I don't want an altar. Can I tell you? Amen, God won't make you go to it. Amen. Removing the man from the garden did not guarantee he would get to an altar. Keeping him in the garden guaranteed he wouldn't have an altar. He may take some things away, to provide you the means to get to an altar, but it ultimately it comes down to you and I choosing. Nobody can present my body as a sacrifice except for me. God, I don't want to live a day. I don't want to go a moment. I don't want to try to do this on my own. But God, I am desperate for you. I need you. Amen. Praise God. Take out that two-edged sword. Lord, start cutting things away from me. Oh, that cutting process may be painful, but I promise you, I may flinch a little bit, but I know it's for my good. I know it's helping me become that which I've been called to be. Anybody else need that happen? Anybody else need some things trimmed off of you? Anybody else need some, amen, some cutting away? Oh, God, it won't happen unless I get to an altar. That's the place I've got to be. This morning, again, we're thankful for what God has already done. But I, I want, as, as we come to an end here, come to a close here today, amen, would you for just a few moments, I want you to make a commitment, not to me, not, not to your neighbor, your spouse, your friend. Make a commitment to God and yourself. God, instead of viewing the disruption in my life and, and getting bitter towards you, I realize, God, you've been preparing a way for me to get to an altar. And I'm going to commit to me and to you, God. I'm going to get to an altar. I'm going to make sure an altar stays in my life. Uh, amen. I'm not going to try and live and bypass an altar any longer. Uh, I need you, God. Anybody want to make that commitment here today? As we come to an end, why don't you lift your hands? Why don't you lift your voice? Uh, commit to God. I will not bypass the altar no more. Uh, I, I can't make it without it. Uh, hallelujah. Lord, I need you to cut some things away from me, Lord. Uh, by, by your word today. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Amen. Let there be a shout unto the Lord here today. Hallelujah. We declare to you, God, we're presenting ourselves, our bodies, a living sacrifice. Hallelujah. While remains within us the ability to remove ourselves from the altar, we are committing to you, God, that we will not do that. We're going to stay on the altar. We're going to let the altar consume us. We're going to let the altar sanctify us. We're going to let the altar alter our lives, our minds, and our spirits. In Jesus' name, come on, let's thank him here today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> yes. Yes. You're wonderful, Jesus. Can't control what tomorrow will bring. But 
but I know here in the middle is the place.